The hottest question on everyone's lips right now is what is the best time to see Comet Neo Eyes and where do I need to look? And I'm going to answer both of those questions with the most precision that you will find on the internet. If I'm wrong, feel free to comment down below. But if I'm right, you have to hit the subscribe button. Do we have a deal? Good. Let me show you exactly how I planned this image of Comet Neo Eyes and Carrot Kenning Castle. So I'm going to start with the new version of the app Stellarium. I'm really enjoying the new version and you can also access it from the web, from your web browser as well on your computer. If you just go to the website, which I'll link down below. But when you load up Stellarium, it shows you the night sky for when darkness falls on the current day. So if you wanted to plan for a few days in advance, just make sure to change the date and time. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swing around to the north and we'll see that Comet Neo Eyes is already in the app. And if I press the time in the bottom right corner, there's a slider on the bottom which I can use to fast forward and rewind time. And you can see how Comet Neo Eyes is going to move over the course of the night. So what you need to do is press the layers button in the bottom left and then press and hold grids and lines. Make sure you have azimuthal on and everything else off. You don't need the equatorial grid, just the azimuthal grid. That gives you these red lines and that's going to help us work out the exact position of Comet Neowise. So you can see there, if I go back to that red line there, you can see that at 2348, Comet Neowise will be nearly 5 degrees up and at an azimuth of 350 degrees. And if I keep going forward, time in minutes, I'm going to go to 355 degrees in azimuth. And it's about 4.5 degrees up at 0017, 20 past midnight. And you want to just keep taking a note of the different azimuths by every 5 degrees. So the next one I'm going to go to the northern meridian. So there is 0 degrees azimuth. When it's crossing the northern meridian is when it will be at its lowest in the sky. And from there on out it gets higher and higher into the northeastern skies. And then the sun will rise and fade it from view. So just keep taking notes, uh, you'll go to the next one, 5 degrees azimuth occurs at 10 past 1 in the morning and it'll be about 4.5 degrees in altitude, so keep doing that to get a picture of where the comet's going to be on your night. Now because the comet's in the north, I want my subject to be in the north, so I've picked Carrig Kennan Castle in the Brecon Beacons, I've placed myself to the south so that I'm looking at it whilst it's in the north. And now to do some real precise planning, I'm going to use the app PhotoPills. And I've positioned myself in a, a place that is convenient to park and that has public access. Um, and it also has a clear line of view to the castle. Now you can also use Google Maps and Street View and the 360 degree panoramas on there to get an idea of your shooting location before you even go there. But I've chosen my shooting position and you can just place the red pin by pressing and holding and moving it wherever you want. Or in my case, because I'm actually in position, I can press this button here on the bottom of the map and that places the pin via GPS exactly where I am. Next I need to do is find the castle and I'm going to zoom in on the castle. And what we need to do is put a subject pin, a target pin on the castle. To do that, there are some tabs at the top. And you want to come to this tab here with the red and black pin. Press the red and black pin and it gives you a black pin. Press and hold, put the black pin over the castle. And then you get some information from that black pin. You can see it at the top or you can press the black pin and get the information there. But it tells me that the azimuth at the top look is 1.6 degrees. So remember when we took notes of every five degrees of azimuth. Uh, in my current position, the, uh, the castle is 1.6 degrees in azimuth. So that's just when Comet Neowise goes past the northern meridian. That's when the comet's going to be its lowest in the sky and as close to the castle as it will be for tonight. So that's exactly what I want it. Now you can move your position obviously if you want and fine tune things to get the perfect azimuth between you and your subject. Now it also gives me the altitude difference which at the moment is minus 0 0.02 degrees. So I'm technically looking down a little bit on the castle. If the castle was up on a bigger hill that would be a different altitude. And remember we took notes of the altitude of the comet for every azimuth. Uh, and I think it was about 4.5 degrees, 4 degrees. Um, so I'm looking down at the castle at minus 0.2, the comet's going to be 4 degrees up. And then what you can also do is you can try and decide what focal length to use. So pressing the layers button in the bottom right corner, under map tools I'm going to choose field of view. 
and then I'm going to go back and what happens is you get this extra little view and you get some extra information at the top so you can see I've got my camera there the a7 III I've chosen my focal length as 400 mil and I'm shooting in portrait mode and then what you can do is zoom in on the castle there you can move this viewpoint over the castle and then you can see how wide the castle is going to be in your frame so you can see there that the castle is it's about a third of the width of the frame at 400 mil so that's perfect that's going to be nice and big but what about the the vertical is the comet going to fit in there so we press the three little lines there to the right of the boxes top right of the map and then you comes up with the field of view for a 400 millimeter lens so the horizontal angle of view is 3.41 degrees and the vertical angle of view is 5.12 degrees so remember the comet's going to be about four degrees up and i've only got five degrees on the long edge of my image so it's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze i'm probably going to have to zoom out to about 300 mil in order to get the castle at the bottom and the comet with its tail at the top of the image so that's how you can decide what focal length to use. So this was my setup for this image. I was using the Sony 100 to 400, which is great because I can zoom out if I need to keep the comet in the frame. The only thing is it doesn't really have a fast aperture. So in order to get a longer shutter speed, I was using a Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro, which allowed me to take 30 second exposures quite easily. And as you can see, I was also using a lens warmer to keep the dew and fog off the front of my lens. Now I didn't really vlog much when I'm concentrating on shots like this, I just cannot think straight. Like 100% of my brain focus and concentration is all on the task at hand. Like if you asked me a question, I probably wouldn't even hear you. Like I'm so focused on the task. But as you guys probably already know, I got the shot I was after. I ended up having to zoom out to 280 mil and I shot the foreground first and then as the comet came into line I actually had to move the frame up a little bit just to get all of the tail in the shot so it's kind of like a mini panorama of two shots but I was so happy to get this shot and uh, this was uh, this was my reaction guys <laughs> Oh, guys, I had to move. I've left my time lapse camera over there somewhere. Um, but I had to move just to keep the comet in line. But I'm, I'm rolling some shots for stacks now, but I've got it. It's looking. <laughs> I had to do like a two shot panorama um, just to get the top of the tail in the, the frame. Um, so I've got the foreground and then a, a shot of the sky. So it's kind of like a mini panorama, but the moon's just started popping up. So I've got moonlight on the castle, illuminating it, it looks oh, so good, I cannot wait to see this image. Now with the shot out of the way, I thought I'd go back to some classic vlogging, but the night sky had a little trick up its sleeve that would completely ruin my composure. Alright guys, so I've come to a new location now, I jumped, packed everything up in the car, uh, took a little drive just so I can keep all oh, those knocked loose and close. Oh. Oh, okay, I'm going to speed up a little bit. Oh my dear God. Uh, just so I can keep the comet in line with the castle. Guys, look at those knocks. Oh my God. I don't know if I'm in focus, but I haven't got time. I need to get aligned with the castle. Ah. Uh. Sadly, I couldn't get the NLCs in the comet in line with the castle because if I went any further, those trees you see there were blocking the view. And that's not to mention the really annoying power cables that were right in the way as well. Guys, I gotta keep it quiet. At somebody's house. Not gonna lie, I have to dress past.
So the Noctilucent clouds lit up the northern horizon like molten silver. It was the most surreal and dreamlike experience I've ever had. And knowing that there were thousands of people across the country enjoying this spectacle, some of those only out because they've been inspired by my photos and my videos, I can't even begin to explain how rewarding that feels. But I shot about three time lapses, sadly only one of them survived the, the lens dew and the lens fog, which is this one that you see here. And I've got so many images that I need to edit, so much sleep to catch up on. So if you want to see the images from this night and the following nights, make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck. Please, guys.